All right, we got to talk about these, the WWE earnings report from this past week. Obviously, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. They cut a whole bunch of people. As it turns out, their most profitable quarter of all time. Well, we said that going in, it was going to be. But and this blew away expectations. Well, I, I do have to congratulate Brandon Thurston. He actually was higher, but he was almost he was almost perfect on target on 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 every number. So I mean, I got to give him credit for for studying that stuff really well. Um, but yeah, they cut back. The key to the business is that it is so much less expensive to be doing television the way they do it now as compared to before. And the television money is identical because it's guaranteed. Uh, the ratings are sucking. but and, and, you know, I mean, one of the things on that call, we had talked about on Wednesday night that it might happen, and it did. There were three different people going to Vince and go, what the hell is going on? Not quite that much, but it was three different questions about the ratings, uh, maybe four. Um, and, you know, Vince, you know, he had very weak answers. Um, he said that it would be back. He, he said it would be back in months, but I think he meant months after the pandemic ended. It would take months from that point to get the numbers back. I do not believe that we will, short of creating a new megastar, um, I think that the, the number may, the numbers may come up when crowds are back. They may. Um, I think they will a little, you know, a little bit. Um, I do not believe that we will be, that WWF will be, WWE will be back at February numbers. Um, at all without, um, you know, I mean, because they never went away. The cycle isn't broken. People have moved on. The shows were not good for the most part. I mean, there's exceptions. Actually, I really like SmackDown this week, but, but generally speaking, the shows have not been good. And, you know, they've, they've, you know, they've, they've lost a lot more viewers. And one, one of the guys, um, I think it's Brandon Ross, you know, pointed out, and he was actually sort of right and sort of wrong. He just goes, you know, why? Why is AEW and NXT coming back and Raw and SmackDown aren't? And Vince's answer is, is because they were new. And it's like, I mean, that answer, I guess, was just something that, that popped into his head. I mean, but it makes absolutely no sense. If any show should have declined the least, it's SmackDown. It's on network TV. It's less competition than the other shows. You know, like like people who only have, there's there's 35 million homes in the United States that have, um, you know, network capacity that don't have cable capacity. Now, not all of those homes get smacked down, but most of them do. And so so they, they've got a big advantage because those homes don't have the, the news stations and things like that, that, that and that, that, that's a lot of the competition. But also, the shows with a long shelf life, Raw and SmackDown, should have the advantage because they've been around forever. You know, and Vince's thing of, of like it's this newness. Yeah, you know what? In the first month or two of both of those shows, Ron's of, of AEW and NXT, um, I think that there is something that, you know, the beginning and the new coat of paint and new cars feel and all that, which you kind of said. But that's that after two months, that's not the case anymore. Now you're you're down and dirty and the newness is over and it is what it is. Um, well, I mean, he had his own newness on Fox. That he didn't last own, very long. He had his own newness on Fox, and it lasted. He, he they, they got a great first week. They got a good second week, and then you know they were pretty steady at about two and a half million, and now they're at you know one point nine million. Um, but the the reality is is that um, for first of all, first of all, you know when it comes to the eighteen to forty nines, which is the key, um, NXT is actually twenty five percent down since February. Um, Raw and SmackDown are down about between 25 and 35 percent. I'll run the I'm going to run the numbers on Tuesday. AEW is down six per six to seven percent. So there is, you know, um, there is that. But the reason AEW is down the least because week in and week out, it's the best show. That's the that's the only reason. If it was as, you know, if it was the same show as if it was the same as Raw. It would be down. I think it'd be down way more than Raw. It, it would get killed if they had that quality of a show week in and week out. But um, the other thing that that worried me was, you know, they were asking Vince, you know, okay, so so Vince's thing is that 
after the crowds come back, it will take months and we write, we write back, the numbers we write back to where they were before, which I do not believe will be the case. Um, but the other thing he said was, is, you know, he was talking about what they can do to get the numbers back and, of course, create new stars. You know, yeah, you know, he got that and, and that's right. But the other thing he said, and this is what concerned me, was he said, we need to do more things outside the ring, more personality stuff. And it's like, it's when I realized he is being insulated. I, I don't know if his research guys, because, because, okay, I, I see WWE research stuff and I see, I don't see AEW research stuff, but I know it. Um, and I can see it for myself. And I also know it because I talk to people who know it and, aw research which is you know i think the main guy is chris harrington i mean he's looking to learn he's not looking to you know what i mean there and, and tony too tony's looking to learn he's not looking to bullshit himself they're not looking to bullshit the wwe it's re there's really no insight into the research that you get the numbers but there's no insight there at all you have to figure it out on your own which i do but it's not said there Okay, so figuring it on my own, like I do for AEW and for Raw and SmackDown, um, the thing that gets the, the, the things that where you lose viewers is when you go outside the ring, um, whether it's UFC, whether it's WWE, whatever. Um, now, you need to do it sometimes for variety, okay? But you know when you're doing it that, you know, and, and sometimes you do stuff to, to, um, help build personalities because you need to get the personalities over it's what i call you know leg kicks in in a fight in the first round you know it's like you're you're building stuff for later and in and and everything like that you know you're paying your you know whatever it is you're you're, you're uh trying to get interest later on so to speak but you're sacrificing now um the idea that going with the outside the ring stuff i mean they did that Viking Raiders Street Profit stuff, and it died week after week after week. And in AEW, it's the same thing. They go outside the ring for any length of time, and you know, for the most part, the audience will go down and and down a significant amount. But in doing so, you know, the hope is is that you build personalities and it pays off at the end. Just like when you're hyping next week's show, during that that quarter when they both hype next week's show, that quarter always goes down because people are switching around because you're hyping next week's show you're not in the ring and you're not having matches but you really should do it because you're trying to build next week's show so um but when he said you know we need to do more outside the ring stuff it's like you know in the 80s and probably in the 90s um and late 90s for sure in the late 90s for sure because i followed that stuff too in the late 90s at that absolutely worked that audience to that audience then it worked to this audience now, no, it's a completely different audience. And it was like, when I heard Vince say that, it's like, you are still thinking like it's the 90s or something? Doesn't anyone tell you anything? I was really, because um, this is elementary if you follow this Well, style. it is, but there's a lot to this, Dave, because I have been watching all of these shows from the 90s. And the outside the ring stuff in the 90s, I mean, it is night and day to the outside of the ring stuff in WWE in in 2020. I mean, it's not even close. These interviews, these backstage segments, they're fucking atrocious. The interview people ask stupid questions, the interviews are yeah, awful. Yeah, but it's the, but it's the same thing in a but it's the same in AEW and AEW. Some of the segments are quite clever, but we know that they're going to lose viewers and well, they do. Well, in AEW, in AEW something you have to also consider is that there is another wrestling show on the other channel at the same time. Yes, and so if true. you are a wrestling fan, then yeah, if you're going to an out of the ring personality profile and you're not completely invested in AEW, you're just like a wrestling fan, you're going to switch and see what's on the other channel. That doesn't necessarily mean that like as a rule, doing stuff outside the ring is going to die. Like, well, it has. Well, it, it has, has for two different reasons. One oh. is AEW is going up against competition and SmackDown and Raw, which aren't, their backstage segments suck. Not all of them, even when they're good, even when they're good. It doesn't matter. It's like not all those segments suck. It's a it's Well, a the vast rule. majority do. 
Okay, but the rule of thumb is, and it's been for some time, is that you do long segments outside the ring or you do those vignettes that used to be, then they used to be stuff that built characters and things like that. And, and granted, you know, the Viking Raider Street Profit stuff was, was pretty hokey. Um, but all of that stuff, it, you know, it's that, is, that is the audience now. They do not, they turn off when you go out of the ring for any length of time. And, for Vince not to get that, even if you're going to go say, oh, it's because it's crappy. But you know what? It's not like I said, the good stuff is the same way. I've seen some stuff that's that's very good. Well, you good. don't know if it's going to be good or bad until it's over. Okay, so but if, the, if most of it's bad and you go backstage and you're used to bad shit, you don't know if it's going to be good or bad. You switch the channel. Okay, but how's that going to build ratings? Well, it's not going to build ratings. Okay, so there I mean, you go. Slowly, they've got to... I mean, it's not going to happen, but I mean, in an ideal world... They would fix these backstage segments, and over the course of time, people would learn that, in fact, they don't all suck, and then maybe things would be better. But there's maybe. no hope for this right now, because they keep but, doing the same shit over and over again. Yeah, I suppose you could be right, and also it could be, but it also could be a completely different, and it is, it is a completely different audience now, you know. Um, well, the audience is different all across the show. They, they've all been trained a certain way, and it's going to take a long time to undo that. Yeah, but I mean, the audience is, you know, their audience is, is 50 to 57 years old, you know? I mean, that's their audience. And it's, that's, it's a very complete, that's a completely different mentality than 23. Now, granted, you want 23, but obviously, they are so far away from connecting to that age group, which is the, you know, ultimately the biggest problem of all, is that they have a bunch of, you know, one of the things that that wrestling had for the most part when you look at the the places that really pop big you know and i was thinking about this just the other day you know different places that i you know that when when wrestling hit big mainstream where the characters were really big in the culture the bookers were um you know as young as 25 but usually not older than 40 and there's there are exceptions for sure but Generally speaking, they were in that age group. I mean, um, they were certainly not 74. You know, although Sam Mushnick did tremendous, you know, in his late 60s and early 70s. But, you know, it wasn't, you know, I mean, Sam's right-hand man was Larry. And so, like, in, let's see, when, when St. Louis really turned around with Bruiser Brody and, and Flair and the Von Erichs, I mean, not that they were doing badly. They were doing well, but they really hit that, you know, big... Um, you know, period from, I guess it was like 70, 78, 79 to 83, yeah, I guess 83 when Matisic left after the Flair Brody match. Um, so that four year period. So Larry was born in 46. So he was in 79, he's 33. So Larry's 33 years old. And Larry was the new book, you know, Pat O'Connor had been the booker. And then Larry came on. And Larry had, you know, grown up in St. Louis, and he he learned from Sam, but he also had, you know, the knowledge of watching these different places and bringing in, you know, like really going with Bruiser Brody and really going with Ric Flair, and those were the kind of, you know, and, and the Von Erichs, you know, because Fritz and Sam were friends, but whatever, but it's like that's what brought in the young crowd is because they had a 33-year-old, you know, co-booker. And is there, a, you know, I mean, you look at the guys who were running, I mean, even, you know, it's, it's, there's a, there's this inability to recognize and to give new people chances in those positions and an inability to, you know, they take some chances, but then they forget them. And, um, you know, you just got a lot of issues. Don't look, Tony was what, 36, 37, 37, I think, you know, and, you know, Levesque is 51 just had his birthday last week you know it's and, and again i'm not saying that that a guy in his 50s can't do it i'm just saying that when i look at most of the places that really hit hot most of the time the booker was under 40 that that was the architect of this and that's a you know even if you have the promoter who's older but you know again the promoter didn't jump in when Larry Massick was doing stuff. Sam didn't change his mind every every other week and make sure to beat the guys that he was trying to push, you know, to prove whatever the hell he wants to prove. Well, you know. Sam and every other booker had to make money. Vince does not have to make money. 
Yeah, they had to make money. If they had Vince to make had to make money that. or he would go out of business, I mean, quite frankly, this Vince would have been out of business a long time ago. Well, he'd, he'd be going out of business now. He wouldn't be out of business yet. But he would be he would be starting to, to feel it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he had to... If this... Put it this way. In the 1985 economy where you had to pay for television instead of getting paid by television... Um, they would be, they really, then they really would have to be making all those cuts that they pretended they had to make that they obviously didn't have to make. Um, cause that would have been a completely different environment. And, and then, yeah, this, this, this would not have flown at that point. Well, you know, but then again, who, this, what we have now is completely unprecedented. Um, you know, with no, no ability to run house shows. And we really don't know, you know, I mean, the reality is we really don't know. We know where the TV ratings are going. But we really don't know where the house shows are going. And the reality, the other, the big surprise, the other big surprise in the financials was how great the network did in June. It did freaking phenomenal. And, and it was, you know, they have their own reasons on why they think it is. I heard, you know, they think it's like the, the social media finally caught up. And, no, and it's because there's no more free month. There's no more free month, number one. And number two, because, um, People don't get together to watch the pay-per-views as much as before. So you have more people needing to, to see, if they want to see it, you got to get it at home as opposed to going over your buddy's house. And I mean, that's the reason, that's the reason AEW set their record. That's the reason UFC's pay-per-view numbers are, you know, so much higher than we thought because everybody thought that, oh, you know, people are going to stop watching because they have to pay for it in the economy. And it, and, that doesn't happen if you want to see something. And here's the other thing, too, that we didn't figure out. But now, you know, with hindsight, we can figure it out. That, that is that a lot of people are spending a lot less recreational money on a lot of different things than they were before. So they actually have more money. Now, you know, if you're unemployed, that's not the case. But, you, but many, many people have more money to spend because they're not spending it on bars. They're not spending it on dates. Is that, I do people even do that now? Can you do that now here? I don't think you can. Um, they're not spending it on, um, uh, restaurants. They're not spending it on, you know, so many other things that they would normally be spending it on. And they're spending it on streaming services. I mean, every streaming service is going through the roof, including WWE Network. Um, not through the roof, but they're, they're increasing. Um, WWE Network, but W, you know, they're 190,000 above what I, 195,000 buys above what they sh realistically should have been. And it's really been the big change was in June. Yeah. And, and the big, the big thing absolutely was dropping the free month and combined with the fact that, um, you know, more people are are watching separately than than ever before so um but still even knowing that i was well, yeah really but i mean in a lot of places and granted we were earlier than most people but i mean we shut down in seattle we were shut down the second week of march yeah we were shut down mid-march too and so but, but most people were not shut down quite that early well my point is like you know march april i mean if, if it were all just because your friends are now buying the network instead of uh, going over to a buddy's house. I mean, that would have been like April or May. So June yeah, corresponds no, and, well, better with getting rid of that free month. Absolutely, no, absolutely, absolutely. That's the key. Absolutely. And and also, I mean, you know, listen, I got emails and text messages all the time. Like I get a hundred a day for Observer Live, and for years, I heard from all these people that hadn't got the they hadn't paid for the WWE Network in three years. It was free month, free month. New card, new email address, free month, over and over and over again. I, I flooded with these. And the other thing was, and people noted this to me. Oh, if, if you try if, to cancel, if they try to cancel, they'll give you a free month, too. Well, that, too. But, I mean, if you were always going over to your friend's house, you know, your friend can give you their password. So, I mean, you don't have to buy it yourself. I mean, they may have cracked down on the number of people that could share the passwords, but I mean, I used to hear from people that said, oh, I got seven people that are sharing my password. I got eight people sharing my password. So... The free the the loss of the free month is is probably the biggest aspect of anything. Oh, I think it's the biggest, but the pass but still the password sharing in theory. Now that well, it, it would it would it would not lead to increases in UFC or AEW because you know it, you know no you know now they're on pay per view. 
No, 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 no. A- AEW is on pay per view, but right now they actually get more um, because because they have a younger audience. Unlike with boxing, AEW actually has more um, pay per view buys streaming than they do on television. So it is sharing the password. I could call up, you know, my friends and go, "Hey, this is the password," and we'll all watch AEW on my password. It doesn't happen that much. Um, and UFC is one hundred percent streaming. And you could, you absolutely can share your password. And I know that you can with a, a certain number of devices because, you know, on UFC night, you know, we have three different devices going on in different parts of the house, um, in different computers watching UFC. So I know you can do that. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, what was I going to say? So it, it, you know, it can exist, but it doesn't really exist. People, you know, you, yes, you can do it, but they don't do it that much because the UFC numbers, by that theory, it, it people just that used to come over your house just shared passwords. These UFC numbers sh- should be m- much lower than they were, put that way. So it, it, you know, yes, you can do it, but does it really happen? No, it doesn't. Not, not, not to enough of a degree to make a difference. All right. Any other notes? Um, let's see, as far as, well, I mean, do you think that people have finally, because I know people knew from the start, but I still hear, you know, people in the company with, well, it's too bad they had to make those cuts, but you know, it's a hard time and not realizing that I've never heard anybody say that. Oh, I, I still hear it now and I'm going, okay, you know, if you're, that, if you're really not paying attention at this, there's so many people who don't pay attention to the business at all. I mean, compared to like the 80s, I mean, that's the one thing I've noticed is the guys in the 80s, I guess because they were paid based on the business, that like those guys, like you could call them up, what's that? What was the house last night? And they would know because their paycheck revolved around it. And now it's kind of like, you know, I mean, there are people who know, but they're not that much because I mean, and, and, you know, again, the business now isn't the, the, the gate of the house or the business is your television numbers. I know people that, that, you know, they, when it comes to television numbers, they don't have any clue what they are. And they certainly don't have any clue about quarters. And, um, I, I won't say this about AEW because AEW, that does seem that the guys, you know, know a lot more, but that's because they're, they have to learn business. You know what I mean? They're in a position where they have to learn, but the talent in um, WWE is really like if you aggressively want to learn, you can, and there's avenues to do so. But a lot of them, um, you know, whatever. It's 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 just interesting that you know they they don't know how the segments are doing. They don't know the basics of anything. They just and and again, they you know how much leeway unless you're um, you know one of the chosen few who gets to do your own promos. I'm not sure that, you know, you don't have much leeway on your promos anyway to figure out what what you're going to say. But it's always, it's still good to learn, though. 